Hello! We'll begin by keeping things really simple. In layer one, I have what I'm calling an antennae, which is basically just a stretched box. We're going to apply a bullet to a two point poly chain. Let's go to layer two and pull out a box. It's just going to be a flat box, sort of centralized in the middle there. We'll add a few segments. Notice that they don't necessarily have to line up to these segments of the antennae. Now what I'm looking out for here is this base I don't want distorted. It's just from this point upwards that I want the, uh, the bullet to take effect and leave this anchored to the bottom. So let's okay that. We need a couple of weight maps. So let's jump over to weight shaded view and F to flip the polys so we can see what we're doing. As mentioned, I don't want bullet affecting these two points down here. So I'm going to select all these points at the top. Let's create a weight map. Let's just call it bend, 100%. Okay, that's fine. So while we're here, we'll create another and we'll call this height. Initially, we want zero, create. Okay, so deselect the points. Let's go front on. We'll turn on weight shade here and we'll pop over to the map tab. Let's go to weights and then we want to go under the fall off. We don't want point, we want linear. Now with the right mouse button clicked, we want to hold and drag to the top. So we've got this little arrow here. So the smaller end means less and the bigger end means more. Simple as that. So uh, now we've got the height map selected. All we need to do is change to 100% and apply. So we now have zero here and here. And there's a linear fade from zero to 100 at this point here. Okay, that. The final step to make is to turn it into a two point polychain. So let's select that row of points and just delete. So we now have a two point polychain in layer two. If we have seven, we can change the name. So we'll call this one antenna because I can't spell antennae. And then this one, we'll just call it a two point polychain. Okay, save that and send it to layout. Here we are, this is quite simple to set up, so let's get cracking. So for the 10 i oh, let's just turn it off for now. And the two point polychain, we will turn that to wireframe. We might give it a color as well. Now the first thing we need is some animation on the two point polychain here, so I don't need to bore you with this. So here we are, really simple, just a two point poly chain going around in a square. Over to the effects tools tab and let's make this a deforming body. And then let's click on item properties. Great. The great thing about two point poly chains is they are extremely quick to calculate and we only need to fiddle with a few settings. So firstly, we will select under mesh filter, we will select the bend weight map that we created earlier. And next we'll go to shape lock and we'll need the translation and rotation. So let's play that through. Two more tweaks to make. Firstly, shape retention. Let's set that to about 10%. So you can kind of see what it's trying to do there. So the dampening in this case will help us out big time. So about 3%, perhaps a little bit more. Okay, so let's zoom in on this frame here. Now I want this curve to be slightly more stylized. So rather than kind of bend in this way, I want something more that bends around this way. Now that's the reason why we created the height weight map earlier, where it starts at zero and then linearly, 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 linearly ramps from zero up to 100. Linearly, there you go. So under the shape retention, where it's currently 10%, we're gonna hit the little T button to the side. Now we're gonna change the layer type to a gradient. And then the input parameter, we are gonna select the weight map and we're gonna point that weight map to the height weight map. For some reason, we can't move this top one, um, but we will create one here at 0%. So currently it says, a value of 100%, which means 100% shape retention, which means it's not going to bend at all.
This is uh, 0%. If we remember, this is at zero on the weight map. So we don't want much movement there. But the higher up the height of this chain we go, the more bend we want. So we're going to create a key at the end at 100% and the value we're going to knock down to something like three. And already we've got control over that stylized curve that we're after. So if we go back to the weight at 0%, perhaps 100% is too high, perhaps we can relax it a little bit. There we go, so it's got a bit more of a curve. Perhaps we can tighten up. Tighten up the end point. So as so long as this value is less than this, this value at zero, we should get a nice curve. So let's close that down and play it through. So it's still a bit flappy possibly, and then we can deal with that by again going back to the dampening coefficient. Let's knock that up to six. Yeah, that's pretty good. And remember that we can always change the pace of the keyframes just to uh, take some of the sting out of it. And you see how quickly it updates as I'm changing as well, which is really nice. So that's pretty cool, I'm happy with that. Let's get the antennae attached to that. Let's turn it back on. You'll see that the antenna is not parented to the two point polychain. So select this and hit P on the keyboard. Nodal displacement, let's double click on that. Before you all gasp in horror, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go Metalink, Metalink, double click that. And we're gonna point that to the two point polychain. Keep on smoothing and then connect that to the input. And that is that. If you scrub the timeline, you'll notice that the two displacements don't quite tally with each other. Now that's everything to do with sequence order. We've got to thank Ryan Roy for the solution here. Bring up your scene editor and where it says name, click on that a couple of times until it says sequence. In the sequence stacking order, displacement goes first and immediately underneath that is the object that's following the displacement. So if we click on the antennae, and we keep it clicked and just move to the left slightly and drop it underneath. And what we should find is that now that antennae nicely follows the two point polychain. So thank you, Ryan, that is a great tip. In case I've made a hash of explaining that, I'll uh, try and find a link and put it in the description below. Just a quick note on the robot head. So here it is in modeler, the head is obviously on a layer on its own, and then the two-point polychain and the antenna, both in the correct places, but the two-point poly is in the middle of that antennae still. So they're all in the right place. And if we take a look at the layout setup, you'll see that the two-point poly is a parent of the head, which has the animation on it, but the antennae itself is not parented. It still thinks it's down here somewhere. And also if we flip to sequence view and click on the parenting icon, we'll see that the uh, antennae is immediately below that two point poly. But again, please check out Ryan's video as it's, uh, it's got a much better description <laughs> than mine. I hope that was useful and everyone, please take care. Hopefully I shall speak to you soon.